That don't look like it. Oh, it is recording. Well, howdy, people. Greetings, people of the tarot. I am doing the queen spread. This is a VR2 wayward sun. And what I have done is taken out the queens, all the queens, and taken a few other cards just to shuffle the queens really well to make it a little easier to shuffle them. And the idea is about which queen are you? So the first one will be the queen that's most dominant, the second and the second dominant, and the third is the shadow, and the last one is the one that's your furthest away from. So, since Queen Asset has asked me to do this, I will, because I really respect her. Uh, I think she's an amazing woman, and you should check out her channel, Aussie Girl. I She is very wise, with woman with lots of wisdom. So, I'm going to go through the deck and find the first queen. So, oh yeah, I have Queen of Cups. Let's see if I can get a little more light without... This is pretty dark. And I thought I would read. This is a journey through the hidden, hidden, into the hidden realms. So I thought I would read from the book and see what they really have to say. So they're saying right now on top, I am the Queen of Cups. And it may take me a few minutes because they're not all together in the book. So i got to find cups and then we can. They're not, they're not long to read. Entering the chamber, dark yet luminous, you are greeted by exquisite most music softly filling the empty space as it is, if it was coming from the very air itself. The notes have a strangely tangible quality and feel as if they are forming trendles that surround your limbs. Relax. You breathe deeply as your heart beats. You feel the music entering your blood, infusing your body, pushing through your skin, as if to join the trendles. You are completely saturated with feelings. She turns, the woman holding court in this fey place. She is soft and inviting, like the deep blue velvet of her gown, like an ocean you would happily drown in. You want to connect with her. You want to sing, paint, write, create something, anything to express the emotions within. You begin to feel the slightest panic. The experience is so intense. She offers you a beautiful cup of you know not what. You know that if you drink from it, you will be changed, and nothing will ever be the same. You look into her strange eyes and wonder if you have the courage. The Queen of Cups has vast experience in the realms of creativity and connections. She is not afraid of emotions and seeks intimacy. In them, she finds the heart of life and expresses them through beauty and creativity. She also understands the unseen world and the souls of others. Beauty takes all shapes and it isn't always peaceful and easy. The very circle of life, including death and pain, has an exquisiteness that she values. Connect with her if you are willing to take the necessary risks to look into her chalice, gaze into the liquid, and scry your own soul. True intimacy is not for cowards. I think that's me in a nutshell. And that's surprising. Alrighty. Let's see how was I doing this? Okay. Let's see what the second queen that comes up here. Ooh, the Queen of Wands. Now this makes sense, too. The Queen of Wands. A little fiery, yes. Do not back this.
queen into a corner because she would come out a blazing. Alrighty, let's see what we have for the queen of wands. She must be in the beginning of the book. Yes. You barely enter the grand hall before she has taken your hand and spun you around. The flowers in the huge bouquet in your arms that you brought to present to her are scattered on the floor. Replaced by herself as a repellent as the sun itself. Her eyes filled with mischief and a sparkle of danger. Smile as you as you ask, are you ready? Really ready to celebrate? You nod, dumbstruck but with a goofy grin. Suddenly you are dancing to music that makes your heart spin and leap in the chest. With a flourish, she releases you to a fellow reveler and turns to greet another guest. The evening continues on with clever entertainment, witty conversation, and exquisite music. While she is undoubtedly and quite rightly the center of attention, all vivacious energy and charm, she somehow makes sure everyone around her shines brighter than ever. In her presence, everyone is at their best. As the festivities wind down, everyone grows quiet, still humming with energy and optimism. She lifts her glass, and all the glasses in the room follow. Light glittering and sparkling off the crystals and bubbles. With a wide smile and happy eyes, she addresses her guest. To you, my friends, and to life, what a wonderful ride. The Queen of Wands is outgoing and charming. She loves good company and brings out the best in those around her. She is passionate about anything and everything and brings high energy and a desire to take action to anything she is involved with. Her motto might be, anything worth doing is worth doing with gusto. She has no patience for half measures and be, can be intensive towards those who lack her confidence, especially if they are unresponsive to her good nature and sincere encouragement. Life is meant to be lived with the utmost she intends on doing so and is willing to help everyone else do so, too, if they put forth even a small effort. Isn't that lovely? Alrighty, let's see what we get for my shadow side. This is very interesting. Hmm, they're going to be at the bottom. Ah, the Queen of Swords, my sa shadow side? Hmm, I think I need to do some sword practice. What do you people think? Okay, that's pence. And swords. You approach her, nodding her calm demeanor, and admire her gossamer cape, soft and fine as starlight edged with lace as delicate as dew. You try not to notice the sword half hidden under her skirt. It's hard not to notice it when everything points to it. The lustrous pearl on her forehead, her fine chin, the beak of the owl mask around her neck, even the lace of her bodice. It all comes down to the sword, with everything you rather ignore. Her mouth curves slightly, not quite a smile. Her voice, cool, soft, invites you to join her. But her eyes, her eyes don't welcome. They dare. Do you really want to talk to her? Do you really want to hear what she has to say? For she has tasted life, both the sweet and the bitter. She can discern truth from beguiling illusion. She can dance through the shades of gray and find the heart of the matter. Oh yes, she is wise and quite articulate. Come, sit, her voice invites. I'll tell you a story, a true story, her eyes declare. 
You hesitate, fairly certain that her story does not have a happy ending. So is so certain of her truth. If you listen, will it become your reality? This card represents a person with a lot of life experience and not all necessarily happy. She is smart, analytical, and honest. She is never a victim of circumstance. Rather, she sees all difficulties as a challenges. She may not be pleased by everything that happens or that others do, but she will do what is necessary to achieve her goals. With an uncanny ability to see connections and patterns, she is able to draw on her own experience and impart wisdom to others. At times, bitterness may tinge her normally calm voice. Even this strong lady can feel wary of arising above life's misfortunes. So that means the Queen of Pence is left, which is my, um, goes with my sign because I'm, I'm a Virgo and the Queen of Pence goes with vertical. So she's, her and the swords I think I really need to work with. Pentacles and swords. So, you walk carefully, trying not to crush a single plant, but you find the task impossible. Greening and flowers and fruit are everywhere. Her garden is a wild tangle of growth. Leaves of all sorts, shiny, velvety, down, leathery, beg to be touched. Flowers and seed pods, some etherical, some alien, distract you from a moment until the sweet, smell of bright fruit draws your attraction elsewhere. The sensory feast overwhelms you, making you feel drunk and unfocused. What are you doing here? You shake your head, hoping to clear your mind. Looking up, you see her. She stands in the center of the flora cornucopia, still and silent and overflowing with sensual abundance. Her jewelry crafted from treasures deep from deep within the earth, glow with powerful energy. She is eminently physical and yet pulses with life, force that seems beyond anything as mundane as flesh and bread. She reaches up and touches the flower of a tree. As a drop of drew caught on a petal falls to her skin, tracing a tiny rivulet down her arm, the flower transforms into a ripe apple. She takes your measure, and even though she seems to find you wanting, she hones out the fruit she just plucked from the tree. The Queen of Pentacle loves life and appreciates and nurtures beauty. She understands it all, not just the aesthetics, but also deep in the workings. The physical world, solid and lush and sensual, is just energy moving very slowly. Knowing that, she can work with raw elements of the world, co-creating and manifesting to her will. Her will, her heart's desire, is a care for the world and all beings. She is willing to share her knowledge, but only as a recipient can handle the responsibility. And that is that. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you stayed with me. My reading got better as I went along because I'm not used to reading out loud. I really feel like the Queen of Pents is more me, but I can understand why she's in the background right now. Um, and I can understand totally why um, these this makes sense to me at the moment. So I really need to work on my swords. I need to practice that mental fortitude. Um, so... I hope you all enjoyed this, and thanks for watching, my people of the Tarot.